Good morning, Johanna and Jock. Einstein once told, the mind that opens to new idea never returns to its original size. Apparently, from a previous video, we were able to provide a clear-cut beginning and idea to all the new beginners out there based on anatomy. Today, we will be discussing some queries on physiology. We have invited Dr. Patmaja Hari, Department of Physiology, to this program. She is very well known for her enthusiastic and approachable qualities among students within a short period of time. Within 22 years of teaching experience, she has received the best teaching award and also published papers in medical journals. Welcome to this program. Thank you. Physio means natural phenomenon and logos means study. Physiology mainly deals with the natural functioning of the living organism. Also, it helps to identify the pathology which disrupts the homeostasis. So ma'am, could you please explain the importance of physiology in dental practice? Bringing warm greetings from the Department of Physiology. It's aptly said that one should understand the normal functioning of an organ or a system. Uh, once we understand that, it's very easy to identify any abnormality concerned with that particular organ or a system and also to diagnose various rela diseases related to that particular organ. I will uh, elaborate this citing a few examples. In our day-to-day uh, -day practice, we come across uh, two particular conditions, uh, diabetes mellitus and systemic hypertension. And uh, we understand the three months average of the plasma glucose by detecting the glycosylated hemoglobin levels. If the student can remember the normal hemoglobin HbA1c level, it will be very easy for them to differentiate to which category of diabetes mellitus they belong to. And they will also understand that if a person is a diabetic, the process of healing is going to get delayed, which they can explain to the patient as well. These uh, three subjects and uh, with related to physiology as a subject, this foundation puts them very convenient for them to even discuss with the patients what are the pros and cons of the treatment as well. With regard to systemic hypertension, a 70-year-old patient comes mm. uh, for a particular procedure, say if it is going to be RCT, and if this person's blood pressure is 130 by 86, they should understand that it is not hypertension for that age yeah. and it's high only for a young adult of around 35 to 40 and so uh, they needn't um, uh, get worried uh, they can even uh, give reassurance to, to the patient that uh, it's going to be perfect because that level of uh, blood pressure is normal for that age and unless and until they know the proper values for the age then it will be easier for them to also know that if the blood pressure is going to be high they can uh, come across severe bleeding uh, like this we have so many examples to cite but these two being in common i thought i would explain that and hence physiology understanding of all the systems are very important okay thank you as a beginner to physiology man how to approach physiology in exam point of view? Yeah. When we get the feedback from the students after a particular uh, internal examination, the common uh, difficulties they face are three. Yes. Uh, the first one being uh, they are unable to complete all the questions uh, before the time uh, scheduled. And uh, second is they are unable to recollect all the points what they have studied, though they have revised. Uh, it's very easy if we guide them mentioning that if they do their topics on a day-to-day -day basis whatever topic has been taken if they finish that topic instead of bundling the topics yeah. at the end of the session and uh, secondly during the weekends they can revise the topic which was taken the entire week once they finish the topics they can close the textbooks try to recollect the points what they learned if they don't remember they can open the textbook and revise again to develop the speed of writing the best uh, solution is weekends they can take any two topics which are of importance and write that and see they can do their self-assessment 
wherever they find it difficult we ask them to revise it again and redo that mm -hmm. so this will develop the speed of writing and they will also be very uh, confident mm -hmm. wherever uh, diagrammatic representation is there wherever illustrations are there we ask them to do that a couple of times after the class is over and bring them the next day yeah. uh, the second um, solution could be ask them questions before we begin mm -hmm. the class the next day when we have consecutive mm -hmm. classes they tend to learn that particular topic and uh, i always mention that uh, if your mom prepares sweet will you eat on the same day or after one week like that you finish that day's topic so that it is fresh and the retention is more yeah. as well also ma'am could you please provide any tips to make physiology more interesting this is uh, the most important aspect of uh, teaching mm -hmm. there are uh, four important factors which we can include uh, when we do the day to day teaching one is we include our clinical experience i can cite an example uh, one common condition where there is hypocalcemia we come across uh, patients where the calcium level is low and um, they have a peculiar uh, posture of the hand yeah. and we call this as acucha's hand when we demonstrate that yeah. it will be easier for them to identify yeah. when they see a patient with tetany likewise i always uh, mention you give uh, local anesthesia and uh, you make the patient wait for a long time and uh, suddenly you feel that the patient is just collapsing one of the possibilities could be the patient is a diabetic who has had the medication but has not had food and when we give our experience to them secondly we need to enact also certain features say for example uh, we have parkinsonism when they enter the cabin itself it's very easy to diagnose once we demo how the gait of the person would be that is one interesting aspect the second which we can make it more uh, interesting is we ask them questions uh, for example when we teach uh, the renal physiology what they learn in uh, the plus 2 so can you give a couple of examples of functions of kidney and i'm sure most of them would answer and that improves their confidence level third is uh, giving them seminar topics like anemia and uh, this is also the answer for the first question which you were asking how uh, important is physiology in our uh, dental practice uh, there may be patients with uh, impaired fitting of the dentures they may not have proper nutrition they may have only porridge or they may have only tea and coffee because they cannot chew anything and on a longer time if we see they become anemic it could be uh, any nutritional anemia so we give them related topics and ask them to do seminar and uh, it's very interesting to note that they put in lot of effort and they come out with so many points and we also ask the spectators could you add any more point and they come out with more point that makes it more interesting and again the retention and recollecting uh, ability is more and at the end of the seminar give them a souvenir or no it's out of our own interest and that really makes them it more interesting they look forward and on the first time we ask anybody who's volunteering to do seminar they just have an inhibition and next time when we point out somebody and ask them to do and the second time when we ask the most of the class volunteers yeah. mm -hmm. so these three factors one is we have to give examples of our clinical experience and we also tell when you see a patient like that who has got hypocalcemia you have to give calcium iv very slowly otherwise what happens when we narrate the entire history it is little time consuming maybe it will take about 15 minutes extra but on a long term they remember yeah, that yeah. so well and i still remember after so many years they call up and tell we saw a patient like that and we could diagnose just because of that yeah. second is enacting and third is giving them seminars and asking them few questions okay. could you please tell the books to be referred according to your curriculum 
that's a very good uh, one because uh, with regard to physiology we have quite a few authors and uh, students get a bit confused each one giving their own views from their seniors get views from their peer group there are a couple of books which are uh, very easy for the students to understand and that will be easier for them to uh, learn during the examination also both point of views uh, the recommended textbooks are the first one is uh, textbook of human physiology for dental students by dr indu kurana and the second one is textbook of human physiology for dental students by dr ak jain and then one last question na scope of physiology as a career one of the best and wise uh, options for a woman who has taken a uh, branch of medicine as a profession uh, for uh, the major primary reason that uh, they can balance between the profession to their highest satisfaction and also be a good family lady both to the family and to the children uh, second uh, we can um, contribute so much to the budding um, students mm. uh, who can uh, appreciate how physiology as a career is going to be now even the men have started opting for uh, physiology thank you ma'am for spending your valuable time with us i also appreciate the consideration and guidance you gave towards us ma'am could you please convey a message to the future students who are opting for physiology thank you feeling very happy to be a part of this program um especially being in the midst amongst the young students we also feel very young we have the fullest maximum satisfaction imparting our knowledge to the budding doctors and uh, they are the ones who are going to solve many of the day to day problems especially in the dental field two important uh, messages which they should carry is let them not feel that examination is going to be a burden or learning every day is a task they need to enjoy the process of learning this being the first year as they are coming directly from the school they might find it a bit difficult one is they are shifting their hometown from their hometown second the subjects are new and it's not the pattern of learning which they were doing during their school days once they enter the clinical side once they see a lot of patients they get away from these inhibitions secondly they have to go through a lot of journals once they go to the clinical side correlate with what they have learnt for one important reason is that they will also get interested in the research research should be definitely a part of their learning process once they are into learning uh, research the learning process is very easy and they get more interested let them not find it difficult as a student to write exams let them enjoy the process of learning and secondly let them also get involved in the process of research okay thank you thanks and my best wishes to the budding doctors